Everyone has their own reasons for buying an island, but it's usually to build a tropical paradise fit for a king. Endless white sand beaches, entire jungles, and the ocean all at your doorstep, and it really is all yours. Many of the world's wealthiest have splurged on larger kingdoms to use as a hideaway. Owning a private island not only provides privacy and peace of mind, but also gives you status. The fascination with islands is called Islomania, and is definitely a purchase of passion. It allows owners to make their mark and have the prestige of doing something very few have done. Today we're going to look at a few billionaire-owned private islands, from secluded havens that have the security of a castle to tropical resorts. Richard Branson, Necker Island and Mosquito Island. The CEO of Virgin Group has an impressive portfolio of homes, yachts, cars, and planes, but why stop there? When you have a net worth of $4.1 billion, you're allowed to splurge on greater comforts. Necker Island is a 74-acre island in the British Virgin Islands, and it is entirely owned by Sir Richard Branson. It may be a private island, but it operates as a luxury resort with room for up to 30 guests and six children. But if you've got more family and want to bring everyone along, don't worry. The nearby Mosquito Island is owned by Branson and has room for 16 additional guests. But it's not all luxury and island fun. Necker Island is powered by a large array of solar panels and they're working towards being entirely powered by renewable energy. The island contains a 10-bedroom Balinese-style villa at the top of the hill above the beach, offering unbeatable views of the ocean and the island. How much will a retreat on Necker Island cost you? Just a mere 100 $2,000 per day. I mean, you are getting an entire island to yourself, but the cost also includes all the amenities, including a personal chef and a team of 100 staff members, not to mention unlimited drinks. He bought the island at the age of 28, just six years after starting the Virgin Group. It took three years and $10 million to transform this uninhabited island into a luxurious private island retreat. The resort features the finest materials money can buy, and you'll find Indian rugs, bespoke art pieces, and rare Brazilian hardwoods and antiques dotted around the resort. The island, it currently runs at 80% renewable energy each day. Mark Zuckerberg, Kauai Island. It's no secret that Mark Zuckerberg values his privacy. In 2014, Zuckerberg bought a 750-acre property on the North Shore of the Hawaiian island of Kauai. The purchase cost him $100 million, and it includes two separate parcels. So nobody would move in next to him. But his investment in Hawaii is what grabbed headlines. Back to the Kahuena Plantation, a 357-acre former sugarcane plantation in Pila'a, the area also has a working organic farm and a variety of crops like ginger and turmeric. But if you're hoping to book tickets to this island like you can for the others, we have some bad news. Each, a 393-acre property with a white sand beach. According to the brochures of the island, the space is suitable for about 80 homes, but Zuckerberg said he plans to build just one. It definitely doesn't get any more private than that. We don't expect he'll make a resort and invite anyone over anytime soon. His home will be about 6,100 square feet and have a security headquarters and key card access office opposite point. Head Turner, St. Philip's Island. Pretty. The founder of CNN News purchased the island in 1979 for $23.8 million. Tart. There are still a few billionaire private islands you can go to. Probably the first thing you'll notice about the St. Philip's Island is what isn't there. There are no footprints on the beach and no sounds besides those of the birds and animals. No roads, no music, and no people other than those you came with. Thousands of shells dot the powder white sand because nobody has taken any away. Opalescent oyster shells, some as long as your hand lie unbothered basking in the sun. It's no both to capture a piece of the low country he loved and to keep it pristine and untouched. There are no resorts on the island feet of relaxation, and there are no golf courses. But there are plenty of opportunities to connect with nature and experience St. Philip's the way it was intended. Turner carved out a handful of trails for exploring the island and began an effort to essentially turn back time for the island's animal population. 4,682 acre property has just two homes at present, a caretaker's cottage and Turner's four bedroom, four bathroom vacation home. The latter, set four miles inland, features wood paneling and a cozy porch that faces the Atlantic Ocean. Today, you can take a ferry from Hunting Island State Park to St. Phillips and follow the trails marked by Ted Turner himself. Dietrich Medeschitz, Lao Kala Island. If you're still raring for a resort getaway on a billionaire's private island, we got you covered. Dietrich Medeschitz, an Australian businessman and 49% owner of Red Bull, he contracted Lynn Hunt London and Scape Design to make the island a resort where celebrities and public figures could escape from the paparazzi. All PR is banned on the island, so there are very few images and videos of the space circulating on the internet. He bought Lao Kala Island for $13 million and put in an additional $30 million to transform 
it into one of the world's most luxurious hideaways. Including 25 villas, every building got a full interior overhaul to give you the perfect idyllic South Pacific Island experience. Free flowing shapes, soft curves, and thatched roofs make up your spacious villa. You have several private verandas and gardens with infinity edge pools looking out over the most stunning view. Here, style and sustainability go hand in hand, from natural fibers and woods embedded into the design to wild orchids and organic produce grown right here on Lokala Island. And Henry Jarecki, Guana Island, an American academic, psychiatrist, and entrepreneur. Situated in the British Virgin Islands, Guana is entirely owned by Henry Jarecki. Spanning 850 acres and containing seven beaches, Guana is one of the few private islands in its part of the world that's unspoiled and pristine. Majestic mountains, massive orchards, and breathtaking hiking trails all make up this jewel of the British Virgin Islands. There's no public bar, marina, or any commercial facilities on the island. That's how much they value privacy. The resort's muted elegance and promise of absolute seclusion have made it a favorite getaway for big names in art, literature, and politics. Eek Hotel, established in 1934, is built of native stone and coral and takes advantage of the gentle trade winds and gorgeous views of the Caribbean and Atlantic, with the goal to maintain the island's historic style and ambiance. Jarecki bought Guana in 1975 for $16.5 million and began improving accommodations and other facilities on the island. Passion for conservation also led him to establish a long-term restoration program to protect flora and fauna and even bring back once common species. Everything you eat here comes from the island's own orchards, with internationally trained chefs preparing your every meal with attention to the tiniest detail. As they state on their website, the hardest part about a trip to Guana is leaving it. Larry Ellison, Lanai Island. The Oracle billionaire Larry Ellison has now made the island his home, but that's after he turned it into an eco-utopia. He bought 98% of the Lanai Island in 2012 and paid a whopping $300 million for the 90,000 acres of land. This small, apostrophe-shaped Hawaiian island offers a wealth of experiences for explorers and loungers alike. That last one shouldn't be a problem since Larry Ellison is close friends with Elon Musk, the Tesla billionaire. He wants to turn the island into a tourist destination, but that's not the extent of his plans. According to the New York Times, he also wants to create the first economically viable 100% green community. His goals include everything from widespread renewable energy and exporting gourmet produce to setting up charging stations for electric cars. And those are the private islands of the billionaires. Which one would you like to visit? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.